What's up, guys? Steven one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. Also, it's try to figure out how to get this GoPro 9 to actually be a studio camera day. <laughs> But today we are continuing our look at the best cards in every main set of the game. And today's a cool set, Order of Chaos. Order of Chaos, known for introducing us to the Insectors, as well as just a bunch of really solid generic support, and some interesting support for some other archetypes. Overall, just a very well-rounded, good addition to the TCG Yu-Gi-Oh. Also, we're starting to uh, we're starting to enter my favorite era of Yu-Gi-Oh, so that's like that's a thing. Overall, I'm excited to get started with this list. So, without further ado, number ten. Number ten is the huge revolution is over. A counter trap card with the following effect. When a spell trap or monster effect is activated, that would destroy two or more cards on the field, negate that activation, and if you do, destroy it. This card actually did see some niche competitive play because uh, we didn't always just have all of the Solemns. <laughs> Either it was like strike and didn't exist yet, or it was like judgment and it was banned for a long time. So useful, impactful counter trap cards are pretty solid in Yugi Bands. Obviously the card is tailor made for countering various board nukes, where you're doing big damage to the board by destroying a bunch of stuff. What I like about this card is it doesn't really care what's being killed, whether it's spells, traps, or monsters, it's just the effect has to kill two or more cards. Downside, it's not very good against targeted destruction. <laughs> Unless that target destruction is Twin Twister. It's a Twister! It's a Twister! But against a board nuke, not too bad. Would you rather play, like, Starlight Road? Probably. But I like it. I like it. Number nine is a continuous trap card called Royal Prison. Ah, continuous trap card. I bet it's a floodgate. Monsters cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. Now, why wouldn't you play Necro Valley? Okay, you'd probably play Necro Valley, but being a spell speed 2 means you can activate it in response to something like a Call of the Haunted, so uh, you can flub your opponent's plays, letting them commit to something before they actually know that they weren't ever able to do it to begin with. Surprise, motherfucker. Are floodgates fun? No, but they are good, so it makes the list. It's actually interesting that this one doesn't see more competitive play. I guess it's probably the Necro Valley angle, but there is actually really nothing wrong with this card. You might, this is actually not a bad option. I mean, you got tons of other ones, but if you just need like nine cards for siding, this is, this would be a good like seven, eight, nine. Number eight's The Creeping Darkness. Oh, it's, it's creeping. I'm a creep, I'm a weirdo. What am I doing here? The Creeping Darkness is a normal spell card that reads, banish two dark monsters from your graveyard, add one level four dark monster from your deck to your hand. Holy crap, it's a rota for darks. Now you might be saying, Dave, why doesn't everyone run this? That sounds broken. The card is good, good enough to make the list. Searching any level four dark from your deck is really good. Greffer or uh, Armageddon Knight. There's a lot of level four dark monsters that are, are arguably some of the best level four monsters in the game. So this is a really solid search card. However, it does run into that problem where it requires some graveyard setup in order to use. And the last thing you want your setup consistency card, like a Rota, to require some setup. That's terrible. It's kind of like why Supply Squad's not a super good draw card. It only works when your deck is working. So instead of a setup card, it ends up being relegated to a weird win more uh, extender spell. You play something like Doesn't Matter Dragon, dump some crap, and then you can banish it so that you can then get uh, Armageddon Knight and you didn't use your normal summon somehow. So you can see why the card's a little suboptimal, but given the right deck, given the right scenario, I, I think it'd actually be a pretty useful tool. And it has seen some play in the past. Number seven is G -G 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 Giant. It's a level four earth rock monster with 2000 attack and zero defense. Ah, level four 2k beater. What year is it? When this card is normal summoned, you can target one go 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 monster in your graveyard, special summon, and turn this thing to defense position. If this card attacks, you change it to defense position uh, just like a uh, goblin attack force <laughs> at the end of the battle phase. But this doesn't get stuck there for like two turns or whatever the hell it is, like, like goblin attack force. So that's at least a thing. All right, so why is this good? Well, it's a 2k level four beat stick, so in a pinch, uh, you can hit something with it. That's kind of handy. Level four earth rock is decent typing, especially nowadays. But the other thing is that it it, it summons a guy from the grave, preferably another level four. It is a go go, -go deck and all of the onomatopoeia archetypes are all just basically various link spam decks. So uh, I think your objective here was to make a rank four play. Cue that weird free body meme I got. 
So what is a free body? Let's look at an example. Fun fact, I pulled the audio for that off of like some sort of physics lesson on YouTube. I don't remember. And so much to say here, it's it's just a free monster in a deck that is just, just makes free monsters. But it's a big number for a four. That's that's cool. Number six is Ninja Grandmaster Hunsoul. His level four Dark Warrior, 18, 1000 attack defense spread. All right, well, uh, Dark Warrior, that's good typing, I suppose. Hmm. And he's got decent stats. What do? When this card is normal summon, you can add one ninjutsu art card from your deck to your hand. Ah, good old plus one. What do those do? Well, you're probably getting the ninjutsu arts uh, transformation and super transformation, which are trap cards that basically allow you to get rid of the ninja on your board and just turn it into like any other monster of any, like uh, most of the other types. Supers like dragons and sea serpents, I think. I think that's the better one. And it sends a card on your opponent's field to the grave, I think. Don't quote me on that. I didn't put in my script for some reason. Fucking idiot. If the transformations weren't just trap cards they and kind of slow, I think this would still be played and stuff today because you can do some cheesy crap with these two things. And Hanzo, being a level four dark warrior, means that it's pretty easy to get to your engine to get to the rest of your stuff. But if you flip him or special summon him, you can add a ninja monster from your deck to your hand. So not just does he get the, the transformations, he also can get the monsters. So like, uh, Hanzo is one searchy boy. Can we get like ninja support? Where's my Jean-Claude Magnum deck? <laughs> oh man, all right, okay, let, let's move on. Number five is C number 39, Utopia Ray. Rah! Rank four, Light Warrior XC Monster. Wow, it's an XC set and we finally got an XC Monster. 25, 2000. Three level four light monsters. You won't make it that way. You can also stick this thing on top of regular uh, 39 Utopia. Normally how you're going to make it, Utopia's stuff becomes this thing's uh, material. I'm just here to get Ray. Why would you want to do that? Well, nowadays you're probably just going to stick another one of the Utopia variants on top of this thing so it's just material. <laughs> Feels bad, man. No. Right. But his effect is okay, so at the time, this was at least interesting. It's also the cover of the card of the set, right? You can detach one material from this card. This card gains 500 attack and one monster your opponent controls loses 1,000 attack, but you need to have at least 1,000 light points in order to activate and resolve this effect. I don't know why. I guess they don't want you coming in from behind. Nothing in Yu-Gi-Oh is ever about coming back from a disadvantageous position to have some sort of epic upset. That never happens in the anime. He's basically just big Gaga -ga cowboy, allowing you to just smash over something particularly big. And you know, that that is novel in rank fours, because rank fours have had a history of having a problem of getting over 3k beat sticks. It's just, there's just something about him that can't quite do it, which is why the lightning was so good. And obviously this thing is power creep by lightning, but uh, you know, for the time, not too bad. Number four is Tho Photon Thrasher. <laughs> Photon Thrasher. Photon Thrasher is a level four light warrior monster with 20, 100 attack and uh, what is it, like zero? Zero defense. I remembered it. It's in Duel Links now. That's probably why. I've seen it recently. What's this thing do? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's a level four warrior monster in an early XC set. I bet you it's a... A free body. Cannot be normal summoner set. Must first be special summoned from your hand while you control no monsters. It's got like that cyber dragon jibber jab blah, blah, blah. What is wrong with I Photon Thrasher Cyber Dragon? You knock attack if you have monster. Am I having a stroke? What? You can't attack with Photon Thrasher if you control something else. You can special summon it, hit with your 2100 beater or normal summon something and make a rank four play. That is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm ending it now. We're going to the next one. All right, this next one is going to be part of my new segment. It's good in a deck Dave doesn't know how to play. Insector Dragonfly. <laughs> I like putting uh, generic cards on these lists because I can look at a generic card and be like, that is good because reason. But if it's like this thing and it's in a deck I don't know really how to use, it's not exactly obvious as to why. What's this level three dark insect do? What is wrong with me today? I'm having problems. <laughs> Once per turn, you can equip one insector monster from your graveyard to this monster. whoop de freaking do If an equipped card that is equipped to this card gets sent to the graveyard, you can special summon an insector monster from your deck. Neat, except itself. Boo. And if this thing's equipped to a monster, it increases that monster's level by three for reasons. Okay, so Hornet can send itself from the field as an equipped card to the graveyard to proc this thing's effect. And then I think it pops a card 
And then this will get you to summon a guy. Centipede, maybe? Play lines. But yeah, uh, the card works in the deck that it works in. It summons from the deck and it does it by the mechanic the deck does well. So it is good in that deck. I think that is sufficient explanation. Explanation. Holy crap. Ah, I can't wait to edit this. All right, boys. Are you ready? All aboard the party, boy. <laughs> it, it's in Mighty. Wind up in Mighty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One bandy boy. What's this? What did he do? A rank three with 1500 attack and defense made of two level three monsters. It's a water machine. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to special summon a wind up monster from your deck. Summoning from the deck is good. Summoning from the deck on an easily summonable generic rank three, so basically you can just summon it when you want to, is even better. It does have a second effect, however. If a wind up monster on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach a material from this thing to add that the destroyed monster to your hand. Neat. I Need I guess. You're doing the summony one. Why is the card banned? Well, uh, you summon a couple of them, uh, and combined with- Oh boy, it's been a while since I did that video. You can loop Wind Up Hunter, Wind Up Magician, this card, and something else to keep summoning your Wind Up Hunter to keep knocking cards out of your opponent's hand. However, you need like several copies of this thing in order to do that. So the fact that this thing is banned and not simply limited is quite confounding. Come on, Konami, give us back the party boat. It's in Duel Links. It's fine because we don't have Hunter. Go figure. Where's my party boat? Really good with what grows in the graveyard. <laughs> Chain beat, baby. Oh, we do have an honorable mention. Interplanetary Purple Thorny Dragon. All of that, but dragon is one word. I had to I had to read that several... I've read the card a million times. I still don't remember what order it's in. If a monster you control is destroyed uh, by battle or card effect, you can spell something from your hand. It is a... Free body. And it's okay. It's a dragon. So that's that's probably the biggest part about it. It's got decent attack stats. Uh, <sighs> I'm trying to think what you'd combo this with. It does say by card effect, and it doesn't say opponent's card effect. So if, I guess if you can destroy your own stuff, you can get a free guy. So, you know, that is what it is. It, it's, it's not bad. And we have a dishonorable mention. Numen Arat Tetsudo. Behold, the great pretender. The prophecy has come to pass. Reject your false gods. Reject your false turtles. This is not Tiny Turtle, but an imposter upon a marble throne. Uh, Little Turtle says you can't summon things with 1800 or more attack power, and this one is 1800 or, or less. And its attack and defense are swapped, and it's a level 5 instead of 1. T Turtle's a 1. Turtle's a 1. I don't like this card, although it's part of like the lore of Tiny Turtle. One of them is God Before Turtle, the other one's Turtle Before God. So this is like the prequel Turtle. I'm not even sure if it's actually better or worse, because uh, they stop different things. Little Turtle so uh, stops your opponent from summoning material for things. This thing stops the like the boss monsters in the extra deck. So the one benefit of this one, though, is it, it does stop your opponent from summoning Dweller, which is <laughs> which is the worst. It's it outs my Turtle Boy. Rip. All right, guys. Today's sponsor shout out is going to be to. TCG player use my link in the description below so that you guys can go buy expensive cardboard uh, Helps the channel you guys get Yu-Gi-Oh cards I, I presume you'd want them given the subject matter of the channel. So go check that out. Thank you All right, number one is uh, uh, One we just talked about in like I think the the last list <laughs> MX Saber Evoker. Yep, Evoker came out in the set, and like, if I remember, if memory serves me correctly, uh, this was like the only print of this card for a long time, which made him kind of expensive, which was really annoying. But uh, you could just watch my best exceeds list, and I'll, I'll explain to you why summoning a card from your deck is good. Let's look at an example. Hell, two, two of the exceeds on this list are banned, and they do the same thing. <laughs> Now that I think about it. But what makes this thing more bannable than even the party boat is because it summons uh, level 4 warriors or uh, beast warriors. Yeah, summoning level 4 warrior from, from your deck is, is good. Hell, and beast warrior is actually pretty good too. Again, I, I think the what they thought this was a balanced effect was because it's a rank 3 summoning level 4s. So that means you have to... Presumably a deck that's doing that is, is like a jumbled mess. It ends up not mattering. <laughs> Go figure. We're Yu-Gi-Oh players. Where there's a will, there's a way to break it. But yeah. Invoker's a good card. 
I miss it dearly. All right, guys, that was the list. That was Order of Chaos. Like I said, that was a fun set. There's some cool stuff in here. And even the stuff that I didn't talk about, I actually like a lot of these cards. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll them out of who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!